Hi everyone, uh, today we're gonna review the concept of the five shifters of demand. Okay, a really important concept in demand. Um, and I'm gonna give you the five shifters and then actually plot them on the graph here, okay? So the first shifter of demand is tastes and preferences. Okay, so first shifter here, tastes and preferences. What does this mean? This basically just means what's trendy or what's in style, okay? So for example, if we're talking about, um, this might be the normal demand graph for Canada Goose Jackets. Canada Goose Jackets um, became sort of in style, so to speak, a few years ago, uh, especially among teenagers and young adults. The entire demand curve for Canada Goose Jackets shifted outward, um, okay? So the entire demand shifted, this would be D2 and we see a shift in demand, not quantity demanded, not along the same uh, curve, but actually a brand new curve up here. All right, so that's number one, taste and preferences. Number two, second shifter of demand would be the number of consumers, a okay, number of consumers uh, in the marketplace. So what does that mean? Let's talk about football for a second, okay? So football, obviously, dangerous contact sport. A lot of parents are, are stopping their kids from playing tackle football now in a league um, because of the long-term head injuries that can be sustained playing it. And you might not even know it at the time, but years down the road, studies are showing um, that you develop significant uh, cognitive issues from playing football. And so there are fewer kids playing football now. So the demand for children's uh, football cleats, which like have the spikes on the bottom, you wear them on the field, has declined. The entire demand has declined. Why? Because there are fewer consumers in the market for football cleats now. If there were more consumers in the market, demand would shift up. But of course, there are fewer, so demand has shifted down. This is D2 for football cleats. All right. Now, we get to something a little bit more complicated for number three. I want to draw this out so we really understand it here. So, number three is price of related goods. All right, I'm gonna do this by drawing three graphs. Okay, and uh, hopefully you can see all those. Okay, so for this graph here, we're gonna title it um, Milk, Cereal, and Pop-Tarts. We have our demand curve on all of them. Okay, so let's say that a study shows that drinking a cup of milk per day um, gives you enough calcium that you actually become temporarily immune from the coronavirus. Okay, obviously this is not true. I'm using it as an example. If that study came out, certainly people would be going out to buy milk, right? The demand for milk would increase if that were the case. If milk, if a cup of milk a day made you temporarily immune from coronavirus, everyone right now would be going out to buy milk. We would have an increase in demand, not an increase in just quantity demanded, a brand new curve, right? So the uh, milk would go up. Now, some people don't really like milk, so maybe they'd want to have a milk with cereal because you have to have milk um, if this were the case, right? It makes you immune from this virus going around. So other people would say, well, I don't like milk on its own, but I do like it with cereal. So the demand for cereal would go up as well, why? because these two are complements, okay? Complementary goods in economics mean that they sort of work together in a sense. When people buy one, they often buy the other. Not everyone buying milk is gonna buy cereal, but many of them are, okay, many of them are. Now, Pop-Tarts, on the other hand, are actually a substitute. So we're gonna label this substitute because milk and cereal are what you eat at breakfast, and another option you have is to have Pop-Tarts instead, right? Um, and so the demand for Pop-Tarts would probably decrease in this juncture. Why? Because when the demand for milk and cereal goes up, the demand for Pop-Tarts is going to go down. People who choose between having Pop-Tarts or milk and cereal for breakfast are going to be more likely to choose cereal in this situation as their breakfast food of choice because, as we said, having a cup of milk a day you know, makes you immune from this virus temporarily in this fake situation, 
Okay, so the demand for pop tarts is going to decrease because more people are opting to buy this kind of breakfast than this kind of breakfast. Okay, these are substitute goods. They're sort of in competition with one another. All right, so that's the way price of related goods changes uh, demand. Okay, now notice this is not price of the good itself. All right, so I'm not saying that the price of milk goes down. So therefore, uh, demand for milk goes down. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about how the price of one good relates to the price of other goods. All right. And so this is also goes into the, the section we, you learned about on um, complements versus substitutes and how they work. Hopefully this makes sense. So <clears throat> back to our list here, number four is income. <clears throat> okay, income of consumers. Uh, and let's go back to our original graph here. This one's pretty easy to understand, right? When people have more money, demand is going to increase, right? Um, so let's say this is the demand for um, Mercedes. You know, the car with the logo kind of looks like this or something. Yeah. So anyway, um, when Mercedes-Benz uh, Mercedes operates best on people with high enough income to purchase one, right? So um, when the average income of the average American consumer goes up, the demand for Mercedes cars is going to go up as well. Why? Well, it's pretty simple, right? People have more money. Therefore, they're more willing to spend it on a luxury good like a Mercedes car. Okay. So income also affects demand. It affects the entire demand curve. Why? Because the price of Mercedes is still the same, right? It's probably here, whatever it is, right? Uh, the price of the Mercedes might be, um, let's say, $70,000. And just more people are willing to buy it at that price point, okay? Um, if this was a change in quantity demanded, of course, we would be saying, oh, if the price of Mercedes dropped to 20 k a new curve would not be established, we would just be moving along the same curve and we would say, oh, look, the quantity demanded, the quantity increased, but that's an increase in quantity demanded, okay? So we're talking about, when we talk about income level, the money in the pocket of the consumer, that's gonna shift the entire curve, all right? So. Last one, last shifter of demand here is going to be future expectations. Okay. future expectations. What does that mean? Well, let's take a look. So let's uh, say this is the demand for cars. Okay. And I think I've used this example before, but let's pretend that a news, uh, a news article headline reads, car prices expected to double in 2021. Okay. Once we hit 2021, car prices are going to double. Um, well, that would mean that if you were in the market for a car, like maybe you were saving up for a car or thinking about buying a car, you'd be more likely to buy that car now than next year. Why? Because you're thinking to yourself, wow, if cars are going to be more expensive next year, I should probably get this done now. Even if, if I have to take out a loan to do it, it's worth it to get it at a lower price. So the entire demand curve um, would, shift, would shift upward, okay? just due to future expectations. Now, it wouldn't shift upward permanently, okay? Like next next year, it would shift, shift back down. Um, but right now, in the short term, the demand would shift upward. And that's why we're talking about future expectations. Um, the short-term demand is going to be decided by those future expectations. Um, this is the same reason why sometimes if you buy your plane ticket early, um, you can, you know, a lot of demand for plane tickets often goes up in the short term because people are trying to avoid the higher prices that you pay the closer uh, you book to your, um, the, the closer you book to the time you're traveling. Okay, so hopefully these five different uh, shifters in demand make sense to everybody. Uh, if they don't, shoot me a message. Happy to uh, respond and get back to you on that. Have a great day, everybody.